Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in this wonderful world of ours. Can you feel the excitement? Yes, a new version of Out of the Park Baseball is finally upon us. OOTP24 is now available. And if you're coming across this video, great, stick around because this is a video tutorial for beginners. We are going to focus on the perfect team aspect. If you haven't got a copy of the game yet, go over to OOTPdevelopments.com, find the link for the download, and save 10% until Friday, March 31st. And you can also pick it up on Steam. Simply purchase it within the Steam application, and you are ready to take on Perfect Team. A great way to learn about baseball players of the present, of the past. And believe me, once you dip your toes into OOTP and Perfect Team, you're going to stay there for a while because it is such a fun simulation game. All right, let's get on with the episode and learn a little bit more about Perfect Team. Once you've downloaded the game, the first thing you're going to do is ignore everything on the left-hand side. We're going to focus on Perfect Team for Beginners today. So you want to click on the New Registration button. You want to create a username. Of course, you have to link it to an email account. So you're going to type that in. You're going to confirm your email. Put in a password for your OOTP account. Confirm that password. And then click Register. At that point, you'll have to go to that email address and within that email, you will find a link to activate your Perfect Team account. At that point, you are ready to go. You simply log in with the account that you set up, put in the password that you set up, and you're ready for Perfect Team. Once you've logged into your account, you're going to see a screen that looks very similar to this with your account name, the number of packs that you've received, and the number of in-game currency perfect points that you have. This doesn't cost anything. You can play this for free other than purchasing the game, of course, or you can purchase things within the game if you want some other little perks to help you with your team. Playing perfect team, fairly simple, but there is a little bit of a learning curve that you're going to have to go through, and that's what this video is intended for. When you log in, First thing you're going to see is your login bonus rewards. Every day, you will get a bonus reward pack or two for logging into your Perfect Team account. If you miss a day, don't worry. You'll just pick up wherever you left off. So this is a easy way to get free packs from OOTP simply for logging in. All the way down to the diamond pack, which is the most valuable card pack in the game that you can receive for your login bonuses. Once you reach that diamond pack in the 30 days, you'll revert back to the start. So you'll continue to earn packs as long as you keep logging in. You'll get the free packs. All right, then you click OK. And now we're going to go to your startup screen. You want to enter in your team name. What is the name of your perfect team going to be. So maybe it's Toronto, Minnesota, New York, or maybe it's something like the Mickey Mouse. Whatever you want, as long as, again, it is reasonable and doesn't break the code of conduct of OOTP24. Put in a nickname as well. I'm going to use the Jim Unknown Blue Jays. This is the nickname and the team that I've used over the last year in creating these tutorials for OOTP 23 and now OOTP 24. Once you have your team name in, then you'll notice all the packs that you receive simply for signing up for Perfect Team. You will likely have six starter packs. If this is the first year that you're playing it, you simply get the six starter packs plus the bonus gold pack if you purchase the game before March 31st. I have other packs here because those are loyalty packs. I've played the game since 
2019. And every year that you play the game, the next year you get some loyalty reward packs. So next year, if you buy the game again, you have a few extra packs that you can open up at the beginning. A real cool way that OOTP has rewarded its loyal customers. All right, next thing you want to do is start opening those packs. So when you click on a card pack, you're going to see six cards pop up on the screen. The higher the number, typically the better the card that it's going to play on your team. Numbers go from 40 being the lowest all the way up to 100, of course, being the highest. Anything from 40 to 59 is an iron card. From 60 to 69 is a bronze card. From 70 to 79 will be a silver. 80 to 89, a gold. And 90 to 99 will be a diamond card. And if you get lucky enough to get a card that has a 100 on it, those are the perfect cards. The cards that tend to be the most valuable and do the best within the game itself. So you're going to open up all your starter packs. Again, you will have six, seven, or eight of them. Maybe a little bit more if you've played the game before. And don't worry about anything to do with the cards yet. Simply get all those packs opened up. Again, you'll see a 52, you see a 40, you'll see a 73. The ones with the actual images of the players, those are live cards. Those are cards of players that are currently playing in the major leagues right now. All the other cards that don't have player faces on it, those are historical cards. Players that have played in the game in the past. So you'll see Aaron Boone and you'll see Hack Wilson. Obviously, they're not playing baseball anymore now, but they're still part of OOTP. Again, what a fantastic way about learning history of the game by using some of these historical players. And whenever you open a pack and get a premium card, a gold, a diamond, a perfect card, it shows the backing and you can set it in your OOTP settings to stay that way until you click the card with the mouse. As soon as you click the card with the mouse, it flips it over for you. Again, adding a little bit of suspense and enjoyment in your pack opening experience. Again, the confetti comes down. Again, just a cool little nice animation touch from OOTP. You will definitely want to uh, see the perfect card background a lot because, as I said before, they tend to play the best in the game, and if you decide to sell them for in-game currency, they can be worth quite a few perfect points. Once you've opened up your last pack, you are going to see this message on your screen telling you that all the starter packs are now open, and now you are ready to set up your opening day lineup. Your pitchers, your batters, all your strategies, you're ready to go and start with Perfect Team. You will click the return button in the bottom corner. That will take you back to the Perfect Team home screen. At that point, first thing since you're here, maybe set up your ballpark. When you click on ballparks, you'll see you have five to choose from to begin with. I like to go up to the little pull down menu there and click on modifiers. This shows you the customization of each ballpark and you can pick a ballpark that best suits your players. Do you want a pitcher's ballpark? Do you want a hitter's ballpark? Or do you want a neutral ballpark? If the numbers are 1.0, it's a neutral park. Any numbers below 1.0 will be a pitcher's park, and any numbers 1.0 or above, that's going to be your hitter's park. The higher the number, the better suited it is for your great hitters on the team. The lower the number, 
your pitchers are going to benefit more. So you can have Nolan Ryan in a pitcher's park and he might have a 1.9 ERA. Or if you put Nolan Ryan in a hitter's park, he might have a 3.4 ERA. So park factors and modifiers really do matter. So I'm going to just select a park here. Again, you can go in and you can change it later. So I will select a park and let's continue on with the next step for perfect team. Oh, and a final note on ballparks. Once you advance up to the different leagues, more ballparks will be added. So you'll have a much bigger choice, including real life ballparks that you might be familiar with. So keep checking back in every week or so. You might see more ballparks available for you to use. So we're going to go up to the top left-hand corner. We're going to click on the little overview tab. That's going to take you back to this main screen. The next thing you might want to do is to customize your team a little bit. Give it a little bit of identity, a little bit of personality. So clicking on that link there will take you to your customization screen. And on that screen, you can create uniforms. You can go in and you can create a ball cap for your team and even update the logos for your team city and name. Historical logos, fictional logos, real life MLB logos, all there for you to use because OOTP has a license with Major League Baseball and the Players Association. So they can use the real player names and the real player logos. So I can go in and I can select the Toronto Blue Jays since this is a Blue Jay team. Or I can go in and select the historical logo for the Toronto Blue Jays. What a cool logo that is. But since this is the Jim Unknown Blue Jays, I don't want Toronto in my logo. So I'm going to go and find the generic fictional Blue Jay logo. And there we go. The Jim Unknown Blue Jays are born. You can also go in and start to create your own logos or add your own logos that you might have saved on your desktop. Click the advanced setting button and click on select. That will take you to your hard drive, direct it to the folder that has your logo in it, and you can add it right there. So using in-game logos or logos of your own that you have created. Uniforms, you can uh, create a home uniform, you can create an away uniform, really simple to do, adds that personalization. So again, I'm going to create my ball cap. Choose the different colors I want for my cap, for the brim of my cap. And again, millions on the color palette that you can choose from. I then go and I say, okay, I've got my ball cap. Let's create my jersey. So the Jim Unknown Blue Jays home jersey, we're going to leave it white. We're going to go with the powder blue for the secondary color. And for the main color, let's have a black uniform for the stripes on the uniform. Let's go and uh, change the pants. Yeah, let's give it a darker color. There we go. And again, there's three different pant style that you can choose from with a stripe, with a couple stripes, or without any stripes. And again, just go and customize it how you see fit. The only thing you can't change is the number and team player name, color. Those will stay the same. So have some fun. Play around with the different logos and menus and choose one that looks the best for your team. And then remember, again, you can do the same thing for an away uniform and have two distinct uniforms for your in-game perfect team play. Once we're back on the overview screen, now you can go and you have to set your lineups, your pitchers, your hitters. You can use the icons on the right-hand side of the screen, the ones towards the bottom or for your roster, or you can go up to the team menu and you can select pitching roster and batting roster. So let's start with the pitchers. Fairly easy to set up. 
but you got to kind of know the pitchers a little bit and the numbers that are associated with them. Typically, you want to go with a five-man starting pitching rotation. But before you set them, click on that bottom set of arrows on the right-hand side and make sure you have your best players in the game because it will start with your first 26 players from your packs, which might not be your best players. So once you open up all your packs, then it's time to make sure that your best players are on the active roster. Left-hand side of the screen, active roster. Right-hand side of the screen is your reserve roster. Again, you want the best players on that left side. You can drag them over back and forth or what I like to do when I first start up is go up to this menu here and ask the AI to set up the best players for you. Click OK and you'll notice that now they've brought over the better players to my active roster. Again, there they are by position. You can sort them by overall. The higher numbers generally tend to be the better players. Now you can go back into your pitching rotation and set your lineup. And as a beginner with OOTP Perfect Team, I suggest that when you're in the pitching menu, you sort them by stamina to get the best starting pitchers with the stamina that's going to get them eating up a lot of innings. So I've got them sorted by stamina here, as you see. Now I'm going to go and pick a five-man rotation because that's what's used by most teams in the major leagues today. You want to kind of go with the five-man rotation, at least to begin with. And then you look at your pitchers and at the stamina and place probably your five best stamina pitchers into the lineup. Very easy to do. You'll notice that I've got a couple guys starting now with very low staminas down in that yellow and in that red range. You kind of want them probably in the bullpen, at least till you have a better feel for the game. So you can simply drag those players over to the bullpen side and then drag the pitchers that you want as starters down into their starting role, just like that. And again, maybe you want your higher rated cards higher up in the pitching rotation. So you notice I got a couple gold cards, a silver card there. So maybe I want my gold pitcher cards as my number one and two starters. So I'm going to move them, make sure they're in the right positions there. And then maybe move my silver guy a little bit higher up in the rotation, just like that. And then my two bronze starters, they'll be my number four and five pitchers. You know, just like in real life, you typically want your better pitchers higher up in the rotation. For the bullpen, just make sure you have them all with assigned roles. If it says none specified, just throw them into a middle relief role. That's kind of the default role that you can put them in and then put them on normal usage. Probably for your closer and for your setup guy, you want to look at their stamina. If it's over 15, you kind of want to put them in a stopper role because that's an indication that they could probably play two innings rather than just one. They've got a little bit more juice to give in the game. So I'm going to choose a stopper for my closer and for my setup guy, I'm going to choose stopper as his secondary role. So if my closer is tired or if my first stopper is tired, then this guy will come in and be my stopper for me. Again, just like in the real life situation, if you have a tired stopper, your next best stopper is likely to come in. All right, so you have all those set. Make sure that you click submit you don't need an emergency pitcher because you've already got five starters there. So you can go and take that roll off. And the rest of them, again, you can play around with. Hit submit so that it saves your game. If you forget to do that, you may have to redo that all over again. So any changes that you make to your lineup, click submit. 
Next, let's go to hitters. You can click that little base path in the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Or again, you can go up to the Teams menu at the top and select your hitting, your depth chart from there as well. As a beginner with your hitting lineup, I highly recommend that you go and you sort them by contact. And then you want kind of your top contact guys at the top of the order. You want your big power guys. You can sort them by power. You want them kind of in the middle part of your lineup. And then kind of your more defensive players, you want kind of towards the bottom part of your lineup. Maybe they have a good glove, but not a great bat. So again, I go in and I sort my left-handed pitching lineup based on contact, based on power. I kind of like my power guys in the number three, four, five positions of the batting order. And then my top contact guys as my kind of one, two, six players in the batting order. So you move those around based on the numbers that you see above your batting order. And then you want to do the same thing for your right-handed batters. So let me just Fix this up a little bit based on contact, based on power. All right. And yep, I'm pretty happy with the left-handed pitcher lineup. Now let's go to the right-handed pitcher lineup. Same thing. I'm going to sort them by contact. going to look at the power. My best three power guys. Let's move those into the number three, four, and five roles in the lineup. Little tweaking there. My contact guys in the number one and two and six positions. And probably your speed guys you want in the number one or two slots. Because if they're going to get on base, a stolen base could be a manufactured run. So again, this might take you a little bit of time just to kind of evaluate the players that you have and then where you want them in the lineup. And the little pull-down menu shows you the positions that they're eligible for. So Jeff Bagwell, he can only play first base or DH. However, Acuna Jr., you'll notice he's eligible for many more positions, which gives you a lot of versatility in your lineup. If you have two really good right fielders, one of them you might be able to swap to a different position. Just don't forget to hit that submit button at the top after you've made some changes. Again, I can go to my main screen just by clicking that little house icon in the top right part of the screen, or I can go to my hitting lineup with the bottom button on the right-hand side, or again, you can look at your team page by clicking on the home button where it'll show you your statistics for your batters, for your pitchers. It'll show you your ranking, how you're doing compared to other teams in terms of average and strikeouts, stolen bases, just with that little home button on the left-hand side. Back to the perfect team home screen with the house icon on the right-hand side. Now you're set to go. You've got your lineups in. Now you simply have to wait for the clock to expire in the top part of the screen. While you're doing that, maybe you want to go and get a couple more packs or click on the bottom right hand icon with the two arrows there and then go up and click on manage cards. This screen will show you all the cards that you have in your collection so far and you can sort these cards in any which way that you want. I like to sort them based on kind of the default where it shows the highest rated card at the top, diamond, gold, silver, bronze, all the way to your iron cards at the bottom. And then you see kind of the value of each of the card a little bit later down the screen there, right around underneath that arrow. And again, if you want to sell off any of your cards because you don't think you're going to need them, you can collect more perfect points, as you see right beside the clock there. And the cards that you want to sell off fairly quickly are your duplicates. So you can go up into the other menu at the top of your screen, right about the middle of your screen there, and click on duplicates. And that will show you any card that you have more than one of. 
which you really don't need in the game. So to generate more income to either buy more packs or to buy other cards that you might need, you can sell these duplicates off. And you pick the price point. You click on the sell button right there. That's going to bring you to this screen. And now the green numbers are the numbers of what people are willing to pay. They've put in buy orders. They want to buy that card for whatever it shows in green. Right now there's one buy order for this Flexen card. The red numbers are the sell orders. These are all the other users that are trying to sell this card from lowest value to highest value. When someone puts in a buy order, if it matches one of the sell orders, which is the lowest one, that card will immediately sell. So you can look at the lowest sell order there and go, do I want to go a little bit lower so that my card will be the first one that sells. You can look at the last 10 sales and decide a price on that. You can look at the lowest sell order and then come up with a price that you think is fair, but a price at the same time that you think is going to cause this card to sell off. So you type in the price that you want to sell it for, and then you go down to the bottom and click submit sell order. The card will disappear from your screen because it's put in the card shop now. You don't own it. If you want, you can always go and remove the sell order, but it's always good for your duplicates and getting more perfect points. You can do this for any of the cards that you currently have possession of. If there's a higher valued card that you don't think you're going to use on your team, like this Bobby Witt Jr., which at minimum will sell for 4,000 perfect points, you can go and put in a sell order and hope that it sells off. Don't click the quick sell button in the bottom left corner because that will automatically sell your card for the lowest value possible. In this case, 4,000 perfect points. The gold cards, the quick sell price is 1,000. So if you could sell Paul Splitorf for 4,000, which is his going rate right now, why would you want to quick sell it for 1,000? So avoid clicking that button in the bottom left corner. Your bronze cards, their quick sell point is 25. Again, you can earn more than that by putting in your own price for that card. And your iron cards, their quick sell is only five perfect points. Again, a lot less than you could earn by putting in your own sell price. So just be careful not to click that quick sell because your card will be gone forever at the minimum value from the card shop. You want to build up your perfect points so that you can go to the market and possibly buy more cards or look for specific cards. So I'm on the card shop now where all the cards for sale are listed. I can sort it by cards that I can afford and I can hide the cards I already own, which is a cool feature. The, the cards you own are in green text. You don't want to accidentally rebuy another one. So just toggle that off and click that little button that says hide cards I own. You can also sort them by live cards, players currently playing in the major leagues. You can sort them by non-live cards, players that are not any longer active in Major League Baseball. And you can go through and look for cards that, you know, might benefit your team. Or maybe you have some favorite players from the past and you go, I really would like to own that card. There is also a search possibility where you can go and search for a card. If you find one you want to buy, click buy now and you own that card. So let's go through and let's search for a player together and then go through the process of adding that card to our newly created team. As a Blue Jay fan, I'm going to type in the search bar blue to bring up all current cards that are Blue Jay players. And I'm going to go to non-live players. So I want the historical Blue Jays. And here we go. There are six or seven Blue Jay cards that I can purchase 
that I have enough perfect points to buy. I could get Jesse Barfield. I could get Joe Carter. There's a few there, lower level ones, bronze or iron, but still they might help out my team. So I'm going to buy that Jesse Barfield. Click buy now. It is now part of my possessions. I can click in the bottom right set of arrows and on the right hand side of the screen, there he is. I now own Blue Jay legend, Jesse Barfield. He is not on my team yet on the left hand side. So to put him on my team, I have to remove someone. So I'm going to go through and sort them by position. Barfield's an outfielder. So I'm going to look for a low level outfielder and drag that outfielder over to the right hand side. Now I have one roster spot open. Bring Barfield over. Now I've added him to my team. Jesse is now a Jim Unknown Blue Jay. Now I go to my roster management at the top, go to depth charts, and I find a position on my lineup card to put Jesse Barfield. Because right now it is full from the lineup you created before. You need to insert him into the lineup as a starter. So I'm going to sort by contact. I'm going to look at his ratings there. How does he do against the lefties and against the righties? And I decide, well, looking at these bars and numbers, he does better against the right-handed pitchers. Notice the bars are a little bit longer, a little bit more higher valued. So I want him in against the right-handed pitchers that I am going to face with my team. So I go back to my lineups and I go to versus right-handed batters. And now I'm going to put him in to right field and drop him down. Or I'm going to put him in for the guy I want to replace. And then I'll put him into a position. He plays center field, right field, or DH. So I'm going to put him into the center field position. I need to find someone to back up in case he gets tired. And then I'm going to fill in another pinch hitter and move them appropriately around. Jesse now is in the starting lineup. For against the left-handed pitchers, I'm going to put him as the backup in center field because he's eligible for that position. And I'm going to move him into the number one pinch hitter role. Always click submit. Don't forget to click that submit button. Now I go to my overview page and there you see Jesse Barfield against the righties. Might want to play around with the lineup. He has a lot of power, so you want him higher up in the lineup. I'm going to move him up to the cleanup position since he's my biggest power player against right-handed pitchers. You can hit those home runs. You want him up a little further in the lineup. And then you can tweak it a little bit more, move your players around, hit submit, and now your team's ready to go with the new card you have from the card shop. It is opening day. The results have come in from your first game. Notice it shows the final box score in the top left-hand part of the screen. If you want to be surprised and not see the score right away, you can move your cursor over to the right-hand side, and there's a little area that says Hide Scores. You can toggle that on and off depending whether you want to see the score immediately or whether you want to investigate and look into that game in a little bit more detail. So I like to hide the scores and then every once in a while I like to click on that highlight button and watch my team in action on the field. And this year OOTP has made tremendous gains in the 3D animation of the different gameplay highlights. So here we have our team facing off against Winnipeg. It is the top of the first, two outs, two on. I've got my pitcher on the mound, ready to go. Here comes the pitch, and we have an out. And that inning is over, and now we get to go watch our guys bat. When you click on the highlights, it will take you to the points in the game that they believe are the most important, where there's the most action, the most interest. You don't have to watch it all. You can leave the game. 
You can just investigate by looking at the game log, which shows you inning by inning all the different results from your players, whether they got singles, in this case, a big three-run home run by Jeff Bagwell. Way to go, Jeff. Opening day, getting that three-run home run. And then you can see all the other action from both teams in that game that just finished. So a cool way to investigate before you see the score. You can also look at the box score. And this is a detailed box score showing both teams, showing a graph of you know who had the lead and how the lead changed over time. And then the big drop off in the graph, basically meaning you had the game won. And you can look at your pitcher results. How many innings did they pitch? How many strikeouts did they have? How did your players do in terms of uh, game accomplishments and game rewards that earn you perfect points? Very detailed. That's what I love about OOTP is it's a very detailed simulation baseball game. And again, if you're a stats person like I am, you love to see all the availability of a game in action. And while you're waiting for your next game to be played, you can go and you can investigate. You can go back to the main screen here. You can look at the standings. And there's the leaderboard on the right-hand side. It shows the current batting leaders. Look at this Vlad Guerrero Jr., another Blue Jay. He's leading in terms of batting average in the league. Had a few home runs in his last game too. You've got the pitching leaders. And then at the bottom, you've got your team stats, the teams that are leading in those different categories. To get more specific, click the three bars on the right-hand side of the screen, and you can go deep into statistics looking at batting stats, pitcher stats. You could look at game streak stats, fielding stats, and even projected stats on how your players may do over the course of a season. Such a deep, immersive, statistical game. OOTP24. If you don't have it yet, go to the website and get it. And that is going to do it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for checking it out. Please like, share, subscribe, ring that bell for future notifications. More tutorials on the way to help you guys out, starting with Perfect Team 24. It is a great day for baseball, especially simulation baseball with OOTP. Once again, thank you guys. Leave a comment below if you have any other questions or suggestions for tutorials. I'm glad to make these guys for you. I was a beginner at one time as well. Be kind to yourself and others over the coming days and weeks and months. It can be a, a little rough out there sometimes. And check me out on Twitch, Laptop Pound on Twitch TV. You can get drops, there's giveaways, so many fun activities that I do on my Twitch channel, including pack giveaways and tournaments that we hold right live there on screen. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next episode. Thanks for tuning in.